I'm homesick for a home I've never been in, but I know it's going to be better, better, better than anything I can imagine. Hallelujah. So I'm going to turn the mic over now to my good, faithful brother, Mr. Batman. Thank you, brother. Let's see if I can get up here. Thank you for everything. All right. Well, here we are on a nice, warm day. And we're here to praise God and lead as many people to the kingdom as possible. We're kingdom oriented. We should be kingdom oriented. We have, a, we have an incentive. God has called us to be that holy bride, that righteous one, the one that wears the white garment of righteousness. And you know what? My brother and I have not conversed about this, but I had actually talked to him. I was getting ready to go into James chapter one. Exactly this thing. You know, how do you do this? How do you endure these trials? Well, let's look at what the word says. First, I always like to point out who is the letter to? James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes in dispersion. Greetings. That's Israel. Boys and girls, we need to remember our identity. We are no longer Gentiles. We are Israel. That's why everything in this book applies to us completely. Amen. Consider it great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials. Hold on. How many paint chips did this guy eat to say this? Wow. Wait a minute. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Time out. You know, original thought has never been my specialty. Plagiarism, though, I'm on it. I stole that joke from Turning Point today. <laughs> anyway, I, I progress. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Okay, I got a big note here in my thing that says, how? Question mark, question mark, question mark. How? How does it do that? Because it gives us a chance to witness not just to our neighbors, not just to our family, but witness to ourselves. But guess what? We can do this, God. Look, I'm better than I was the last time I went through this thing. I didn't do too good. But look at me now. I got a chance to prove to you that I am walking in your ways, that I'm teaching others to walk in your ways. You know, when you do that, guess what? You're like, huh, I don't like this cancer, but it is praising God, it's glorifying Him in the radiation room. Wow! It is amazing. God is so good, so good. Now He wants us to do this so we can be mature and complete and lacking nothing. Lacking what? No thing. Every good thing comes from above. Oh, by the way, we'll get there too. But he wants you to lack nothing. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, Mr. Batman, he should ask God, who gives all generously and without criticizing, and it will be given to him. Praise Yah for that, because I deserve all that criticism. I am that old guy. I am the one who is angry all the time. That's me. But the good thing is, it's not me. So it's pretty cool. We have to have faith without doubting. We have to be sure. God doesn't want people who are double-minded. He wants those who love Him, who love Him in obedience to His holy word. Because an indecisive man is unstable in all his ways. Blessed is a man who endures trials. Because when he passes the test, Wow. When he passes the test, he will receive the crown of life that he, God, has promised to those who love him. Oh, wow. Who are those who love him? Those who want to walk in this way, who want to love him. 
and share the good news. The good news is not that Jesus died on the cross. That pays for the good news. The good news is that anybody can be grafted in. Anybody can be saved. Anybody can get that gift of salvation. It doesn't matter who you are. God bless you, brother. Be safe. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, how long you've been doing it. It does not matter. God wants to bless you with the gift of repentance. And that gift of repentance means knowing what he wants you to do. Do you know this is an instruction manual? Amen. And this instruction manual is called the Bible. Basic instruction before leaving earth. So don't leave earth without studying this incessantly. Because this is a love letter from the God who created us to us. And this word is not against you. This law is not to heart hurt you or harm you. This law is to bless you. It's actually a treasure map. I want you to think about this. God talks about two paths all the time. There's the broad path that leads to damnation and destruction. How many people find it? Most. That means many. Then there's the narrow path. Narrow and filled with the Greek word there is phlebo, which means tribulation. Wow. Difficult, not easy. Wow. So there's only two paths. So you're either on the one path as you know where you're going. And it doesn't matter if you know about the other path. You know, I love this, you know, once saved, always saved. And also not only that, but all I could do is say Jesus and I'm saved. You know what? If you're on the bad path and you're doing the bad things that keep you on the bad path that are evil, according to this book, doesn't matter if you know what goes on in this book, you're still going to the destination, which is death. Nobody wants that. The other destination you want to get to is life. That road is narrow. But guess what? The good thing about it, it's narrow, but hardly anybody else is on it. So it feels like it's a broad highway. We need to get more people on this highway. We need to let more people know there is a way to live. And it's in here. You want to have life and have it to its fullest right here. It's in the book. This is the instruction manual. You know, people ask me, why do you do what you do, Mr. Batman? Because Jesus did. Why do you not do what you do? Because Jesus didn't. I don't need uh, a theological degree and 47 scriptures to back up why I do what I do. You know what? When people come up and say, you're weird. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Because we are called to be a peculiar people. And I'm telling you, there ain't nobody more peculiar than this old boy right here. How many old turkeys do you know go around by the name Batman? I do. Hey, thank you, brother. I remember you. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. We need to get up. We, we can't be ashamed of the gospel. God put on flesh, lived a perfect life. Why? Just so he could die and pay for our sins? No. He did that also. That was the big part of it, of course. But he did that to give us an example of what a perfect life looks like. Think about it. Did Jesus ever uh, get really mad because somebody cut him off and, the, and then flipped him the bird and called him all kinds of lovely names? No, he never did that. Even if it was a camel that ran out in front of him, he didn't do that either. Because he has the perfect spirit. And we need that perfect spirit. And that's what he promises us in the book of John, where he says, I will send the Holy Spirit, the comforter to you. And my brother was talking earlier, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us because he sends us that spirit. That spirit is the power of God, the means by which God does things and communicates. We need that spirit. But too many people are starving to death. We, we have a famine of the word. Oh, you got all kinds of people on the Internet preaching. Oh, yes, just say Jesus and you'll be fine. You know what? I'm not saying that's not the case. God will be have mercy on who he's going to have mercy. But can you show me a verse that says that? Because I can show you half a dozen easy that say the opposite. 
that say, if you love him, you will keep his commandments. And again, why? I love to ask this question, why? Because God does not want us to remain us when we go into the forever kingdom. He wants our personality. He wants our uniqueness. But he wants those who love him enough to do the things the way he says to do it. And if you don't, then you don't love him. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He's not a cosmic killjoy. Those commandments are not there to harm us, but to bless us. It's a roadmap. And when we keep those commandments, we get blessed because we become more like him. Okay, this is a law book. And so because of that, there can be quizzes and tests. Here comes a quiz. When was the last time in your theological walk that you were reading this book intensely, meditating on it the way the Bible says, and you came to a realization, wow. That's not what I was taught. That's not what it really says, is it? Because you looked at the original words. Wait a minute. How many people can say they've done that in the last six months? Year, five years. You know what? I'm all of the above. I never put this down. I want to remind people this is the bread of life. And you are starving to death if you are not feasting on this meal every single day day. Every day, God's mercies are new. Every day, God loves you more. I don't know how. I don't know why he would love me. Heck, I don't want to spend eternity with me, but for some reason, he thinks I'm worth that. So I don't want to let him down. Those laws are there so we can say, okay, God wants me to do it this way. I don't want him looking down on me going, boy, why did you do it that way? I told you to do it this way. Why are you doing it that way? I don't know. I don't want to do that. I want to say, God, I read it this way. If I'm wrong, please correct my heart. You know my heart. And that should scare the tar out of us because he knows our hearts. And I got to tell you, for the longest time, I didn't do this with the right heart. I didn't do this for the right reasons. It took a lot to get me to where I'm at. Whew. Yeah, it takes a long time to get this good looking. Oh, and by the way, my modesty makes me the greatest. <laughs> Got to throw a laugh in there every once in a while because I'm getting real serious here. If anybody out there or around here or in earshot wants to know more about the living God, about how you can know that you have that peace that goes beyond all understanding. If you would like to know more about the Jesus who loves you, who died for you, who gives you the way to live because it's good for you. It is a blessing. If anybody needs any information about that, I'm Mr. Batman at MrBatman.com. Phone number is 502-354-8699. That's the bat phone. Rings right in the bat cave, too. Boys and girls, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask that you all join me thinking about somebody you know. There's somebody in your life that just came to your mind right now. Good, look at there, I'm a prophet. No, that's psychology 101. <laughs> so, that person that just came to your mind, that's your target audience. How can you live like him in front of them so they'll want to know why are you that way? Why are you so kind? Why are you so full of love, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness? Why? <laughs> I want them to ask that question. I've not had that privilege yet, but I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. I want my king to be proud of me. I want to be that good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Don't we all want to hear that? Well, now you have to ask yourself a question because here I go again. Why? What do you have to do? Because it implies well done. What do you have to do to walk worthy of salvation, walk worthy of justification? What do you have to do? You have to walk as he walks. Don't take anybody's word for it. Don't take my word for it. Test everything and then hold on to that which is good. Because that which is good comes from the heavens. Not only did the Messiah come from the heaven, and that's easy to see, but we forget. 
God's law came from the heaven so we could know how to live like the Messiah. So we could have the best life now. No, it won't be easy, but you got to count the cost. Walking this walk has cost me so much, (laughs) but it's nothing in comparison to everything that God has blessed me with. I have an assurance that I never had before. I have knowledge. Wow, that's a big word. You know what it means? An intimate relationship. That's all it means. Intimate relationship, knowledge. You know somebody. I have limited knowledge of my brother, but we're working on that too because of communication and distances. But we love each other and we have the same basis in communication. We're talking Bible. We're talking how do we reach out to others? You know what? Not everybody can do that. Sometimes people say, oh, you're different. You have a different theology. You have a different doctrine. Oh, I hate it when they do that because that generally means I'm going to be kicked out of the church. (laughs) But God's word says, for I give you good doctrine. This is Proverbs chapter four, verse two. I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law, my Torah, my instructions. He's telling us right there. What's good doctrine? His word. It always will be. It always has been. Don't trust me. Don't believe me. Let's pray. Abba Father, we thank you for this opportunity to stand here in the light. And Father, there's so many analogies to how your word is the light. Father, we we love you. We praise you. We declare you to this community right now. Father, let this word ring out to whoever needs to hear it so they can be drawn Because no man can come unless the Father draws. That person you had in your mind earlier today, that's the person you want to pray for. Father, draw this person. Father, do what you have to do to me. Help me be different in front of this person so it will draw them and I don't even have to open my mouth. How can we do that? I don't know. It's in here. And you know what? You're going to read it differently than I do. And here's the lovely thing about brothers who truly love Christ more than doctrine. I wear these funny tassel things. My brother doesn't wear those. I don't judge him. He doesn't judge me. I read the Bible one way. He's like, hmm, okay. Well, I don't see that. Okay, let's run and let's talk about people for Jesus. Because you know what? Am I going to get graded by this? Uh Uh-uh. Salvation is a free gift. From the Messiah alone, his shed blood on that cross. Wow. We got to remember that, that it's not about doctrine. It's about that blood. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you that you give us the unction, the desire to want to know more about you. Father, for those who who are not knowing more about and want to know more, Father, help them be bold in their faith to talk to somebody, if not us, somebody, because... God doesn't care who you talk to. He wants you to talk to somebody because every one of us needs somebody to help explain. There's nobody ever in scripture you'll find. Oh, look, I got the Holy Spirit. I know everything now. Doesn't work that way. You need a teacher. I need a teacher. Find a teacher. Find somebody who's walking the walk. Find your anointed appointed and walk as they walk. Okay, be that anointed appointed for the one you have in your mind. Father God, thank you for this. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you for my brother Sonny and his ministry. God bless. Thank you for that, Mr. Batman. Now we come to the time when we ask, is there anybody else that has a testimony that they'd like to come up and share at this mic? Or you might just want to come up and say, I love the Lord. All right. Your faith begins with breaking out of that comfort zone. That's right. I came into my ministry taking baby steps. I still take baby steps. 
The father is still raising me up as his child. Mm -hmm. This young man is going to come up and say something. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be a little or whatever God puts on his heart. But that's the start. Thank you. I'm definitely stepping out of my comfort zone because I never really do any public speaking, but from a young age, there has been a lot of things troubling me, and I was blessed enough to have my grandparents, and they showed me the right things. And so as I got a little bit older, around 13, 14, I started taking it a little bit more seriously. And so eventually I got baptized by Pastor King. And so ever since that day, I've been taking it much more seriously. And by all means, things have not been getting easier. Things have been getting more challenging. However, I know that there's a better thing waiting for me. And I, yes. I know that I should be doing a lot better. Now, I make a lot of mistakes, but everybody does. And I do feel like I fail God a lot, but that's what repentance is for and asking for forgiveness because he knows I have the right thing in my heart. Mm -hmm. I know I want to do the right thing, but I'm just glad to know that there is forgiveness for everyone. And I just want to thank you for allowing me to come up and share some testimony. Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Scotty, I want to thank you. God bless you, brother. For stepping out of that comfort zone. I can remember the day I stepped out of my comfort zone. And then God helped me to keep stepping out of that comfort zone. But then one day he gave me a challenge and I'm holding on to the rope and I, I'm getting close to deep water. And I said to God, I said, if I let go of this rope now, I have to sink or swim. But I had to put my faith in God and I let go of that rope and he got me completely out of that comfort zone. Mm. But he worked with me. Baby steps. Yeah. He's a loving father. Amen. There's now no condemnation. Mm -hmm. I forget exactly where it's at, but Romans 8. Peter is um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I love that verse. <laughs> I think Jesus is talking to Peter, and Peter wants to know about John. Yeah. You know, if his walk's going to be the same as Peter, but Jesus tell him, said, if, if I should take John all the way through until I come back, that's none of your business. Bingo. Uh, and, and, and so... Me and my brother, we walk together. Mm -hmm. I pray for him. He prays for me. And if there comes a time when uh, he's doing something that I may not totally agree on, but then sometimes if I just steady myself and I listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's telling me, watch him. I'm raising him up. Mm -hmm. See how he grows. See how he stumbles, but he doesn't stay down. He gets right back up. He said, I want you to just keep encouraging him to keep going on. Mm. And I had an elder once, still do. And this elder uh, kept encouraging me, encouraged me, but he wanted me to be a little bit like him. Things that he had come to know. And I flat told him, I said, uh, that's not what God's got me doing. Mm -hmm. And I, got, I remember a night that we mm -hmm. had a meal. There was a pastor there and this elder, and they were trying to get me to do something. And I said, if God tells me to do it, I'll do it. They said, you are the most hard-headed person I have ever met in my life. We are your elders. I said, yeah, and I respect you as elders, but I ain't going to do it. Yeah. If God tells me to, I will. Mm -hmm. So finally, I looked at him. I said, you just will say grace and start eating because your meal's getting cold. <laughs> and I ain't going to change my mind. 
So God can even use hard-headed. I'm one of the most <laughs> hard-headed people you ever met. You know, if God don't tell me to do it, I'll just stick to my gun. If it's written in the Word, I'm sleeping good at night. That's right. If God wants me to change it, He will. And God is a God of love, but he's a God, a father that raises up his kids mm -hmm. in holiness. You know, the first time God called me son, mm. he brought tears to my eyes. Mm. We may not feel like a son, but... When God calls you son, there can be no doubt in your mind that I got to keep taking them baby steps. Mm -hmm. Although I, I fail and I fall and I must get back up, God is still pleased with me. And that's what I want to tell my brother over there. Mm -hmm. God is Amen. very pleased with you for what you said today. He tells us to let things come from our heart. I used to try to pray like all these other ministers and do things like the ones that, that were elder me. And God finally looked at me and said, Sonny, I, I gave you a personality. Use it. You used to use it for bad, now just use it for good. I said, you mean, tell me I get to, I get to remain Sonny? I, I get to be? Yeah. <laughs> this personality that I am, he said, just use it for good. And I found out I've got a friend in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I can tell him what's on my heart. I can tell him the truth. I can tell him exactly how I feel. I don't have to cut corners. Mm. And that's what Batman's talking about. Be yourself. That's right. The Spirit will raise you up mm -hmm. to be exactly what God wants you to be. At exactly the right time, too. At the mm. right time. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Now, I, I ran from God for 62 years. <laughs> but just at the right time, <laughs> he brought me into the fold. Amen. Has anybody else got anything they like to say before we close it out? Anything at all to break that conference on. If you feel that tug at your heart, mm -hmm. you just feel something tugging at you. You don't know what you're going to say mm -hmm. when you get up to this mic. But you know that God has blessed you beyond measure. Uh huh. Just come up and say something. If it's no more than I love my Lord. Amen. Break the chains that got you bound. Well, come on up, brother. <laughs> There's always been something. There's always been something special about this young man. I didn't know quite what it was, but. The uh, first time I seen him, it, it, it's something about that draw of the spirit. Mm -hmm. One last thing I'd like to say is that I can confidently say that no matter how many bad things yeah, you've done, no yes. matter how bent on revenge you are, no matter how bad you want other people to suffer for the things they've done to you, it can all be forgiven. Mm -hmm. like, no yeah. matter how bad it is, no matter what you've done, God still loves you, and I Still, I'm trying to wrap my head around it because mm. his love is so unfathomable. Unfathomable? I'm not trying. <laughs> but he has done things in my life that I can't even explain to you guys because it's insane. I, I just can't even explain it. But I can confidently say that no matter what you've done, he will forgive you. And just like the... Uh, man that was hanging on the cross next to Jesus the uh, there were two thieves wasn't there mm -hmm. and it's not about words because the man one of the guys said father remember me 
he didn't say I repent. He didn't say forgive me. He just said remember me. So he made it. And so it's about throwing your faith completely onto God when there's nowhere to turn. And it's not about words. It's about just trusting him uh -huh. and accepting his free gift. And I'm happy to know that. That's probably one of the best things I have ever come to know in my entire life, no matter what I say in the future. This, that will be the best thing ever. Super. And I'd like to also thank you guys for inviting me up and letting me say what I had to say. No problem. I got one last thing. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Now, he said something that I want to give confirmation on. There was a time, and, and I still do it, I mispronounce words sometimes. <laughs> I'm missing almost all my back molars and everything else. I, I eat food like a little squirrel. I got only my front teeth and the top and the bottom. And I was ashamed because sometimes I would mispronounce a word. And God said, I want them to see normal and what I can do with the norm. And I can take that norm and make it the at norm. And I, I come to realize that if everything is, is suit and tie and everything is so perfect, the loss will never come back to the kingdom. That's right. We need to show them that God loves everybody. Come in, He's the one are. that mispronounces words or, mm -hmm. or whatever. It doesn't matter. It matters what comes from the heart. Amen. You know, I want to echo what my brother was saying. You know, it's not about the fancy words we say. It's who we put our faith in. We as people are perfectly faithless. But the God of creation, Yeshua, the one who died for our sins, he's perfectly faithful. He's worthy. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. That's the God who loves you. The one who sits on the mercy seat. And he wants to give you that mercy. Turn to him. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks again, brother. A Met fan just brought some ice cold waters if anybody wants one. They're icy cold. Okay. <laughs> I'll take another one. <laughs> That'll make the wife happy. Oh, yeah. I'll take one. It took me four years to break You're that welcome. comfort zone. I heard God clearly saying, Go. We're living in the last days. That's so true. It's time that we understand that it's not by our power, but the power of the one that lives in us, Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Today in church, I, I made a statement. I said, the pastor preached, I said, now, God gives to us his salvation. You know, that, that means something. It's not my salvation. It's his salvation that he freely gives to us. And the gifts that he gives us that no man can brag, that we grow by his grace. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. I know, Sonny. I know we're going no, to be do you? coming down yeah. the center every other Sunday. And we're going to be trying to get a group together of people who want to search the scripture. Thanks for coming today. 
Here's a little prayer card. Um, my coin in there is a little wooden coin on the back. It's a QR code. If you need some free Bible software, there's some really good software on there. God bless you, ladies. Separate. We want to let doctrine not be what separates us, but what bonds us together. It's just like I believe in water baptism. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that you can just be baptized and be saved by, by the water. You still need that spiritual baptism. Amen. So there are certain things that uh, I remember my first wife before she died. We at the hospital and uh, she wanted to get baptized. She had never been baptized. So the chaplain came by the room to Have visit. Have a blessed day. And he was Methodist and we, we talked the same God, same crucifixion, same resurrection. Mm -hmm. But he said, I, I sprinkle. So he brought the uh, certificate along with him for baptism and he sprinkled my wife and he asked me he said are y'all okay with that i said well it's just a, her way of confessing so it doesn't matter if she's totally submerged sprinkled or water poured over top of her head as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. <laughs> and she got baptized well, there's people that would argue about that and fight about it and separate. The group that I'm talking about being like Bereans, come together searching the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Test everything. What I'm suggesting to do, if there's something that we find that we don't, can't totally agree on through the Holy Spirit, that we table it. And we pray over, we target it in prayer, mm -hmm. and we let the Holy Spirit reveal to us what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And we stay bonded in love. That's right. Into that trumpet sound. Mm -hmm. You see, I've got this strange thing in the back of my heart that I believe that a lot of us that's hearing this word right now is going to go by the trumpet and not by the grave. Mm. If we will take a stand on the word of Jesus Christ right. mm -hmm. and let the Holy Spirit move us and bond us together. That means letting the Spirit martyr us in to mm -hmm. his church. One body. One body. Mm -hmm. Chinese, Koreans, Africans, Americans. Hillbillies. Hillbillies. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're all one. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a glorious day. Mm -hmm. My brother preached on something today. He's talking about the love. Jesus said, if you truly love me, mm -hmm. you'll keep my commandments. Amen. That's something in, in, in my ministry that I can't shake. I hear it repeatedly over and over and over again. Uh -huh. If you truly love me, You'll keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And I've heard it so often that if I'm going to love my enemy, I have to first love Christ. Amen. And his mm. commandments. I can't hate my neighbor. I can't hate my enemy. That's I can't right. do injustice to anyone because I'm becoming just like mm. Christ. Amen. That's the goal. Taking them baby steps. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody else that would like to add a testimony or just say something? Or And if you like, I'll bring the mic to you. Well, one of these days, I'm going to see what the miracle I want to see. I want to be able to make that statement and I'll see a line down here of cars of people and, 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 and let them take the mic and give testimonies until we see nightfall. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's my wish, my prayer. We'll be back here not next Sunday. And I'm going to be talking to my brother because I'm thinking of taking one Sunday and using that to search scriptures. Yes. I believe that since God's telling me every other Sunday here bringing the word, this church without walls need to have one Sunday where we search the scriptures and we get closer to God Amen. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pray over it next week. Me and my brother's going to pray about it. And hopefully by we got the next, we'll have a message for you on where we're going to be that Sunday that we're not here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it might be in somebody's home. It might be somewhere else. It might be at Arby's. It might be anywhere. But I believe that it's time for us to do some scripture searching, mm -hmm. soul searching, and bond together. And my sisters over there were saying, this is my church. And, and, and God corrected me and said, yes, this is a church. Uh -huh. This is a church without walls. That's right. And as we take those baby steps without the walls, without a roof, we're going to raise up Christians uh -huh. that when God says go, We'll go into buildings and we'll mm -hmm. make changes by being the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to have my brother pray us out. Your very heart is content. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. And I, I want to say one more time. It's so important that we recognize where we are and who we are. Are we still walking that bad path that goes to death? Because we're not promised another minute. We're not promised another year. People get cancer. People have strokes, my wife. People fall down and die, my dad. Well, we're not promised a moment. Today is the day of salvation. If you have a question, please reach out to my brother or myself. We'd be happy to answer those. Father God, Avino Malkino, our Father, our King, Lord, we want to honor you with everything that we do, everything that we say. In James, it says we, we look into that mirror and then we go away and we forget what we look like. Father, help us to reflect your image. Help us to reflect the image of the Messiah. Be more like him, less like ourselves. I, I was so blown away because that's exactly what I've been thinking about. That We get to keep our personality. And my brother said the same thing. Wow, we get to keep who we are. But we're not going to be who we are anymore. Praise God for that. Because we won't have to suffer with this body. We're going to have a glorified body. We're going to have a new day. Father, I just lift up everybody who's hearing this right now. That they would have ears to hear. Eyes to see. But most importantly, Father, a heart to receive. We love you. We praise you. It's in Yeshua HaMashiach's name that we pray. Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. Thank you, brother. Now, something that God has already set forth.